Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Natty and Sands, and this, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And I know what you're thinking. I'm not wearing a hat. Hold on. There we go. Back to normal. I know, I haven't posted a video in a while and I apologize for that, but my goal today is to make that up to you guys by doing something really cool and spicy in Adobe After Effects. We're gonna be taking a look at the You Got That meme. A lot of you have been asking me for this meme tutorial and today we deliver. Now, I don't know if you guys saw the SpongeBob You Got That Meme workout motivation video that I posted on my channel a little while ago, link in the video description below, but I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do that in After Effects today or something similar to that. If you wanna make your own You Got That Meme, I don't even know if the meme is relevant, but the information contained and in how to make the meme is always relevant in the world of editing. So to all the people that are about to type dead meme out there, yeah, the meme may be dead, but what we're about to learn is very much alive. Open up Adobe After Effects, uh, cause we're getting started right now. All right, kiddos, After Effects is open and oh my God, Ian, that is a lot of layers. Yes, this, what you're looking at right now is the original You Got That SpongeBob motivational edit meme that I did that I posted on my channel. And I'm gonna walk you through basically what I did here. But first we must understand where the original meme came from and where the original video came from in the first place. So if you guys go to YouTube, and you just search, you got that, the letter U, not Y-O-U, but the letter U, you will find the original video and the original kind of thing that sparked this whole thing. Now, basically when I first watched this, all I saw was an After Effects 3D camera pushing through a bunch of animations and on the beat of every kick drum, they were doing like a vertical kind of blur and then punching in closer to that animation over the course of a beat or two, and then it moved on to the next thing. So if I'm breaking it down in my head, that's what I see. So if we go back into the video, it's just a digital camera that's pushing through animations and the animations themselves are moving in a slight way. So in my own head, I thought, okay, I'm gonna take that original concept and I'm gonna apply it to SpongeBob SquarePants, my favorite cartoon of all time. So if we look at the original video, I'm not gonna play it with music, by the way, because I wanna monetize this video so I can get my like $13 at the end of the month. Deal with it. All right, let's move on. So here we go. I got SpongeBob clips that I ripped from the show itself. And I'm just doing exactly what I just said. I'm taking an After Effects 3D camera, which is right here in my layer. And if I switch my views to two views horizontal, and I just make this bigger so you guys can see what's happening. As I drag my cursor, let's pay attention to our 3D camera right here. All I'm doing is just pushing inwards with a camera. And all of these SpongeBob layers are all 3D layers. Now, you guys may ask, how did you get the SpongeBob animations to move in? Well, that's a whole thing in itself. Basically what I did was I went to the Muscle Bob Buff Pants episode of SpongeBob and I came in here and I cut out three frames of the video. If I were to get rid of these masks, basically what I did was I took a frame from SpongeBob and I masked out SpongeBob just like that three times because he's moving in three different frames. So then from these three frames that I cut out individually, frame by frame, you can see my masking work here. Look at that, beautiful job. I took those three frames, played them forwards, and then I played them in reverse. And then I played them forwards and I played them in reverse throughout the duration of a three second clip. So I just ended up with this, just SpongeBob flexing like that. And then what I did is I took that into my main edit and I edited it to the beat of the song and I pushed in with an After Effects 3D camera through the scene. Now this may seem like a very confusing explanation of how to make this meme. And at this point you may be saying, I don't really know if I wanna make this meme for myself. Yeah, you do, it's pretty easy. You're gonna learn something really awesome today. I promise, just hang in there, hang with me for just a couple more minutes. I promise it's gonna be great. So instead of just explaining what I did to you here, let's do it ourselves, guys. What I'm gonna do is come up to composition, new composition, and it's gonna be 1920 by 1080 at 10 seconds long. And we're gonna name this, you got that meme example, or you guys can name it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter, click okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my royalty free dance music track that I have here, cause I, again, wanna monetize for the $13 instead of using the original track, deal with it, okay. Drop that on my timeline, and then I'm gonna to tool down this little arrow and then I'm gonna to tool down the arrow next to audio and then the arrow next to waveform. And that's gonna show me what the track actually looks like. So I'm gonna come over here to where my kick drum starts and just kind of drag this little like composition work area thing to the beginning of this kick drum as close as I can get it. And I'm gonna listen. Cool. And then we're gonna loop it pretty much right there. 
I'm gonna hit N on the keyboard, which is gonna bring the work area to the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click and go to trim comp to work area. And that's basically just gonna segment my work area to just that area of the song. So now that I have my track down there, you guys are probably gonna wanna use the you got that track link in the video description below to find the actual track itself. You can use 4K video downloader or anything to rip something from YouTube to get the song for free. You guys figure that out on your own. This isn't what this video is about. So now that I've got my fake song down here, I'm gonna need some images that I wanna use in the track. And we're not gonna be using SpongeBob memes today. Instead, we're gonna be using photos from my wedding. Huzzah, look at that. Gonna drop those right into After Effects right here. And I'm just gonna drop this picture of me standing solo right there, looking real adorable if I must say so myself. Come up to my pen tool, and I'm gonna zoom in here with my mouse wheel, and I'm just gonna cut myself out of this photo. And voila, there you have it. I have cut myself out of that photo quite nicely. I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard to bring down my mask options. I'm going to feather it by two pixels and I'm going to expand the mask negative two pixels, basically shrinking the mask around my body, but feathering it enough to not get hard edges. And if you guys look, I'll zoom in here to kind of show you what this is doing. The more I feather it, the softer it gets, but the more on the outside of the mask I see. So by feathering it two pixels and shrinking the mask down, you can see if I shrink it even more, it goes inside of itself. Basically what I'm just doing is creating a nice smooth feathered edge around the outside. So plus two on the feather, negative two on the expansion. That's a little trick of mine. Not really of mine, it's just a trick in general, but use it when you cut stuff out. All right, let's move on. So the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is add a 3D camera into my scene. So I'm gonna come up here to layer, new camera, and whatever After Effects kind of spits out, mine is a two node camera, a 50 millimeter preset. That's totally fine with me. I'm gonna click okay, and we're gonna add that in. It's gonna tell you that there's no 3D objects in our scene yet but just click okay. So now we've added our camera, and now what I can do is come down to my layer right here. I'm gonna hit Control, Alt, and Home on the keyboard to center the anchor point in the center of the photo. And if you guys don't have a full-size keyboard, you can come up here to Layer, Transform, Center Anchor Point in Layer Content, and it will do the same thing. But once I've done that, I'm gonna come over here to this image, and I'm gonna click on this little box right here under this 3D cube to make this layer 3D. Now. In order to really see what we're doing here in our scene, I like to use the top-down camera view. So by coming here to one view, we can switch it to two views horizontal, and that will give us a top-down view like you're looking from the top of your scene, and you see the camera and your images looking top-down. That's the easiest way to explain. So if I click on my camera, I can come down here and I can see my camera from a top-down view, and I can move my camera. And if you look over here on the right-hand side, I'm moving in closer and farther away from my image which is exactly what we want. So wherever the camera starts, let's say it starts here. I'm gonna set a position keyframe for my camera and I'm gonna come all the way to the end of my track and all I'm gonna do is just move this forward. That's it. So now over the course of these five seconds, the camera's just pushing forward in 3D space. And now what we can start doing is we can start arranging our 3D layers where they should go on camera. So. I'm gonna take this guy by using my left side view over here. I'm gonna move myself over on the X axis, center myself right in there, and then the Z axis, I'm just gonna pull myself forward so the bottom of my body is hitting the bottom of the frame here. And I'm gonna go one beat into the song. And then on the second kick drum, as per the original meme, I'm gonna click on this layer right here. I'm gonna hit Shift Control D to cut my layer in half. And then I'm gonna bring this even closer to camera and I'm gonna bring it down on the Y axis so it's more on my face. There you go. And then I'm gonna take this layer and I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna delete it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna vertical blur this in over the course of like three-ish keyframes because that's kind of what I measured it out on the YouTube video itself, three frames-ish. So what we're gonna do is come up here to effect Come over here to blur and sharpen and we're gonna do a directional blur right on our first layer here. And we're gonna crank up the blur length and it's already set to vertical, so that's exactly what you need. So maybe we'll set this to, I don't know, 175, depending on how large your image is pixel-wise. This number will be different for you, but kind of blur it to a length that you think looks okay here. And we're gonna set a keyframe for the blur length. Then down here in our composition, I'm gonna hold Control and hit the arrow key to the right one, two, three times. And then we are going to set this blur length to zero. And now it will blur in, boom and then settle. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna go one, two keyframes. And I'm gonna to tool down my effects panel over here on this layer to directional blur, just so I can see what I'm doing over here. And I'm gonna set the blur length at zero, come to where my cut is. I'm gonna turn this to 175. 
And then we're gonna come up to our next layer right up here. And we're also gonna apply a directional blur. If you go to effect, it should be in your most recently saved things. And I'm gonna hit the keyframe button here. I'm gonna turn this to 175. And then we're gonna go one, two, three keyframes and we're gonna turn this back down to zero. So basically we're using this directional blur as kind of a transitionary move while our camera layer is just steadily moving forward. So we're slicing our layer and moving it closer to camera on the second kick drum and using our vertical blur as kind of our transition tool to get us from A to B. So that's looking pretty good so far. So now what you guys are gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna come and you're gonna wanna cut out a bunch of different photos and repeat this process over and over again if you just want a single image kind of happening in your frame. But if you guys look at the You Got That meme, the original video, even my SpongeBob meme, you can kind of see that there's like multiple versions of it kind of strung out in 3D space. There's also one with chains that kind of goes in front and behind the subject. So I'm gonna show you very quickly how to achieve that without going into too much detail. Otherwise, this tutorial tutorial is going to be like 35 minutes long and you guys are you're probably not even watching at this point but let's keep going anyway so i can very simply just duplicate this one layer by hitting Control d on the keyboard and that will create a second version and what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to bring this farther towards camera and i'm going to bring it over on the x-axis and I'm gonna apply a Gaussian blur to this because it's supposed to be kind of out of focus. We want our middle image to kind of be the one that's in focus. So the one in the foreground and the one in the background will be slightly out of focus. So by coming over here to Gaussian blur and just kind of giving that a nice little Gaussian blur like so, it will kind of make it look like it's out of focus as it's moving forward. We're faking depth of field with this. And we're gonna do the same thing for the back. I'm gonna take my original layer, I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna take my bottom layer because I want my hierarchy to make sense. So this will be background, midground, foreground. So I will take my background layer right here and I will bring it back in Z space. I will bring it over on the X axis, just like so. And then I will bring it down on the Y axis, fitting it inside a frame. And I will just kind of put it where I think it needs to go. Maybe we need to move me over here a little bit there so that makes more sense. And we will apply a Gaussian blur to this background layer, just like so. So there we go, we're kind of faking depth of field on the foreground and the background images with our main middle image in focus, very similar to how the original meme is structured. It's doing this a lot. So you guys can play with this, you can take liberties yourself. To do that, if you look at the original meme, they're kind of doing some sort of like Venetian blinds kind of bad TV half opacity effect on the background and the foreground layers, which you guys can do yourself by just coming into After Effects, coming up here to Effects and Presets and typing in TV and you can just drop a bad TV effect right on that layer and it will do something similar. It will kind of warp it and you guys can come in here and play with the wave warp and transform properties to your heart's content. But we're not gonna get into that right now because that's just getting into micro details and we don't really need to do that. But for now, we're just learning the basics. And if you guys wanted to add the chains in here as well, basically what we're trying to do is we're gonna be looking at our 3D camera at all times, and we're gonna be layering in our photos in the camera path here. So if we're looking at it from a top-down view, you can see that this is my foreground, this is my midground, and this is my background layer, and the camera is just gonna be constantly pushing forward. And as the layers enter and exit frame, you can kind of just see in this top-down view what is happening in your frame. So if we wanted to add some of those chains, what I can do is just very quickly Google search chain PNG, which is exactly what I did here. Downloaded this PNG image of a chain and I will drop it straight onto my timeline and I will first make it 3D so we can manipulate it in 3D space. And now watch over here, guys. This is my chain layer right here, this big long line. I'm gonna pull it in front of my midground. You can see right now it's behind. I'm just gonna pull it right in front and now it's in front of me. Makes sense. I'm gonna scale this down just so it kind of just spans the outside edge of the frame here, and maybe I'll give it a rotation. There you go, and I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna rotate it the other direction, and then I'm gonna duplicate it one more time, and I'm gonna take this layer now, and I'm gonna pull it behind my mid-ground layer so the chain actually appears behind me. I'm gonna set the rotation to zero so it's just a nice straight line. I'm going to scale it up like so, and maybe move it down here a little bit. So now if I get rid of these other layers right here, you can kind of see that I have the chains that are crossing me and one behind me in the background. And I would want to apply a similar Gaussian blur effect to these chains to fake the depth of field. Looking good there, I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it here, then I'm gonna paste it on this background layer and maybe crank this one up a lot so it's much more out of focus. And then theoretically, all of these chains would be gone by the time it gets to our next image. 
Okay, now I understand that this may be very confusing to some of you. Some of you have been using After Effects for a little bit of time. Maybe you understand what the 3D camera is doing or you know that you can do 3D. Others of you are like, I have no idea what you just did. I'm gonna give this video a thumbs down. Please don't give this video a thumbs up. Why, why would you give it a thumbs down? Either way, I know that this was a lot of information that you maybe just took into your brain and some of you are very, very confused, but it is a very simple process and I will try to explain it the best I possibly can. Step number one, drop something into your After Effects composition that you want to be the star of this meme and cut them out using a mask. That's step one, pretty easy. You're gonna make that layer a 3D layer in your composition by turning on the little cube icon next to that layer. Then you're gonna add a 3D camera into your scene and the only thing you're gonna do is keyframe the position forward in Z space and Z space is towards or away from camera. So keyframe the position and only move the Z space. So as you can see on the left hand side, my camera is just moving forward very, very simply. Nothing else is going on. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to arrange my single layer or multiple layers in my timeline to reflect being in front of my camera. Again, foreground, midground, and background. They are all staggered and I'm using a Gaussian blur effect to fake the depth of field on my camera just like so. And then the camera is just gonna push through and you're gonna repeat this over and over and over again with multiple layers and multiple things until you get a result that looks really awesome. And that's really it guys, it's just simple After Effects science. Simple to me, maybe not so simple for you, but if you got confused by anything in this video, just rewind it and watch it again and you'll see that it's not that confusing. And if you understand what's happening, which is basically just taking a fake camera in 3D space and pushing through a scene, past images that are on the side, it'll start to make a little bit more sense to you once you start to use After Effects more and more and more. Maybe you're kind of seasoned in After Effects and you already knew how to do this and you're just watching it because you like me, I guess, or maybe you know nothing Thing about After Effects and this is something that's just absolutely blowing your mind but the more you use it and the more videos you watch and the more you understand the program the easier and easier these things will become for you. That about does it today for me guys. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed which is the meme I guess. We do them here Ooh, I say weekly, but it hasn't been weekly for a while. We do videos every once in a while here on Learn How to Edit Stuff. All right, subscribe, check out the last video that you missed, and I will see you next time.